Good morning, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. 7.16 a.m. here my time. Get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. Today is the 8th. We're going to be reading out of Proverbs chapter 8 to begin from verses 1 on to verse 14. Please follow me along in the scriptures. Proverbs chapter 8, verses 1 under verse 14. Doth not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice? What is wisdom? What is understanding? You know where I'm going. You ought to know. Go to Job 28. Job 28, verse 28. One verse. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 15. Proverbs chapter 15. Verse 33. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. Go back to Proverbs chapter 8. Let's reread. Doth not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice? She standeth in the top of high places, by the way of the places of the paths. She crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in at the doors. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. O ye simple, understand wisdom, and ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. Proverbs chapter 1. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 1, <clears throat> verses 22 on to verse 23. How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity, and the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge? What is a fool as defined by scripture? The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Verse 23 in Proverbs chapter 1. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. <coughs> Proverbs 8. Verse 6, Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth. And wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing froward or perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth, and right to them that find knowledge. Hold your place here and go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. Chapter, chapter 2, verses 12, on to verse 15. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. If you are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, you are sealed unto the day of redemption. The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and the Lord is that Spirit, dwells within you. Spiritual things. Spirit of God with spiritual things. The scriptures. 
Verse 13, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the capital S Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man. Let's read verse 16. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. <clears throat> Back to Proverbs chapter 8. Verse 8. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth. And write to them that find knowledge. Receive my instruction and not silver. And knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies. And all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride. I will be like the Most High. And arrogancy. These say in their hearts, Depart from me, for I am holier than thou. These are smoke in my nostrils. That's in the book of Isaiah. You go find that. You go find that. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy. And the evil way and the froward mouth do I hate. Counsel is mine. And sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. <clears throat> and let's read in Proverbs chapter 8 verses 35. Well, 33. On to verse 36 now. Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. For whoso findeth me findeth life and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. <clears throat> Go to Psalm 46 now. Psalm 46. Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Though, therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, Though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Shilah. There is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God. The holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And that right early. The heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttereth his voice. The earth melted. 
The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Shelah. Come. Behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. He bringeth the wisdom of the wise to naught. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariots in, fi in the fire. Look at me. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Silah. <clears throat> Go now to Psalm 128. Psalm 128. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. God is a God of judgment and recompense. Okay, you got to remember that. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. Thy children, like olive plants, round about thy table. Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion. And thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life. Yea, thou shalt see thy children's children and peace upon Israel. Fear of the Lord. What happens to someone who is on the Lord's side, who truly feareth the Lord? Go to Second Timothy. Second Timothy, chapter four. Second Timothy, chapter four. Second Timothy, chapter four, verses one on verse eighteen. I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and feelings. Oh my, it doesn't say that. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Could today we say, for the time has come? What do you think? For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned on the fables. But watch thou in all things 
Watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. Make full proof of thy ministry. We're all in the ministry of reconciliation, every single one of us. Yes. But make full proof of thy ministry. Do the work of an evangelist and not what the modern church building system has equated to evangelism as they define it today, but rather what is in the scripture. Verse 6. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. You fear the Lord. How can you love this present world? And is departed unto Thessalonica. Cretans to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. And Tychicus have I sent to Ephesus. The cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus, when thou comest, bring with thee, and the books, but especially the parchments. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. You're going to reap what you sow. Are you you're aware of that? What, because evil isn't executed speedily? Or uh, because judgment, excuse me, because judgment isn't executed speedily against an evil work, you're going to continue therein? Verse 15. Of whom be thou ware also, for he hath greatly withstood our words. At my first answer... At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it might that it may not be laid to their charge, because they feared men to love this world. They chose the things of the world, pride and arrogancy, the things that were beneficial unto them on themselves. You really need to consider how much you love this world and how much you fear the Lord. Are you looking at verse 17? Read it with me. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me. Stop. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me. And strengthened me, 
that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Go to Psalm 27. Psalm 27. Come on. Come on, fingers, work with me. Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord. The Lord. Who saved you? If you are saved, born again, converted. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, when the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear, though war should rise against me. In this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. Now, we are the temple of the Lord today, in this dispensation. Okay? The temple of the Lord is holy, which ye are. If you are saved, born again, convert it. The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Holy Ghost dwells within you. Okay? And this temple is holy. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. The beauty of the Lord. Is not his word beautiful? Does not his word do right to all those who walk therein? For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me, and answer me. When thou saidest, Seek ye my face. My heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Hold up for a second there. And get the gravity of this verse. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. Now dispensationally, during this time, these people under the law were not eternally secure. Again, the Lord could come and go, come and go, come and go. Today it is different. But very quickly, verse 9, for us today, in the time of the Gentiles, what happens when someone gives themselves over 
the flesh who gives themselves over to that which is evil. And they know it. What happens? You know where we're going. First Corinthians chapter five. First Corinthians chapter five. Yeah. Yeah, we're going there. First Corinthians chapter five. Verses one. Under verse 7. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. That was the offense. But because of the offense, and ye are puffed up, and have not rather mourned, That he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. For verily, for I verily as absent in body, but present in spirit, have judged already, as though I were present, concerning him that hath so done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together in my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Purge out, therefore, the old leaven. Purge out, therefore, the old leaven. That ye may be a new lump as ye are unleavened, for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Let's read verse 8. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter five. Verse seventeen. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become. Back to Psalm 27, verse 10, to the close of the chapter. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take, take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, the destruction of the flesh, your enemy, church of the living God, Satan. For false witnesses are risen up against me, 
and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted, unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And of course, Psalm 88. Psalm 88. Verses 15 on to verse 18. I am afflicted and ready to die from my youth up. While I suffer thy terrors, I am distracted. Thy fierce wrath goeth over me. Thy terrors have cut me off. They came round about me daily like water. They compassed me about together. Lover and friend hast thou put far from me and mine acquaintance in the darkness. Proverbs chapter 28. Verses 12. Under verse 14. When righteous men do rejoice, there is great glory. But when the wicked rise, a man is hidden. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Happy is the man that feareth always. Not the fear of man. Not the fear of the world. Not worldly sorrow. Godly sorrow. The fear of the Lord. Happy is the man that feareth always. But he that hardeneth his heart shall fall into mischief. First John chapter one. First John chapter one. Verses five on to verse ten. First John chapter one, verse five on to verse ten. This then is the message that we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him. And walk in darkness. We lie. And do not the truth. But if we walk in the light. As he is in the light. We have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from some sin. No, dearly beloved. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth, cleanseth us from all sin. If we say, 
that we have no sin. We deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Go to, go to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. <clears throat> Verses 8 unto the close of the chapter in Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Vanity of vanities saith the preacher. All is vanity. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yea, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright, even words of truth. The words of the wise are as goads, and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. And further by these my son be admonished, of making many books, there is no end, and much study is a weariness of the flesh. Hold your place there. Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Verse 18. For in much wisdom is much grief. And he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. Much study is a weariness of the flesh. You read in the scripture, your flesh is going to grow weary. But see, the Lord is your strength. And he will give unto you what is needed for you. See, it's a battle between the Spirit of God and the flesh. Which one are you truly giving yourself unto? Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good, or whether it be evil. This is King Solomon towards the end of his life. And towards the end of his life, King Solomon was in sin. He was far from the Lord because he built the abominations of his heathen wives that took away his heart. Go to 1 Kings chapter 11. Go to 1 Kings chapter 11. Come on. Come on, fingers, work with me. First Kings chapter 11.
verses 1, on to verse 10 in 1 Kings chapter 11. But King Solomon loved many strange women. Together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites. Moabites, Ammonites, traceable unto the lineage of Lot. Edomites, Edom, Esau, Zidonians, and Hittites, traceable, I believe, unto Ham. Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart after other gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. Hold your place here and go to Deuteronomy chapter 17. Deuteronomy chapter 17. Verses 14 on to verse 20 in Deuteronomy chapter 17. This is where Solomon done messed up. When thou art come unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, and shalt possess it, and shalt dwell therein, and shalt say, I will set a king over me, like as all the nations that are about me, be like the world when the Lord is their king. You can read that in First Samuel. Thou shalt in any wise, thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. One from among thy brethren shalt thou set king over thee. Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. Remember where he says in the Pauline epistles, but brother goeth to law against brother and that before the unbelievers, not before the church, the church of the living God. But he will not multiply horses to himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt. Egypt, a type of the world, going back unto the world. And to the end that he should not multiply horses. Now the horses of Egypt are flesh and not spirit. That's in Isaiah. You go find that on your own time. For as much as the Lord has said unto you, ye shall henceforth return no more that way. Neither shall he multiply wives to himself, that his heart turn not away. A double-minded man is as unstable in all his ways. Multiple wives. How can your mind be settled on just one? You, you search for the deeper meaning of that one. <clears throat> Neither shall he multiply wives to himself, that his heart turn not away. Neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. And it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book out of that which is before the priests, the Levites. Aha, remember what we looked at in Ecclesiastes, huh? And it shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the days of his life that he may learn to fear the Lord his God to keep all the words of this law and these statutes to do them, that his heart be not lifted up above his brethren. And you're puffed up. And that he turn not aside from the commandment to the right hand or to the left, to the end that he may prolong his days and his kingdom, he 
and his children in the midst of Israel. Go back to 1 Kings chapter 11 now. Picking up at verse 3, talking about King Solomon. And he had 700 wives. And he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concub concubines. And his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass when Solomon was old, book of Ecclesiastes, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as did David his father. Then did Solomon build an high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Moloch, the abomination of the children of Ammon. Again, Moab, Ammon, linked on to the children of Lot. And likewise did he for all his strange wives which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. And the Lord was angry, Solomon, because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice, and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods, but he kept not that which the Lord commanded. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 3. 1 Samuel chapter 3. Not 2 Samuel, Brad. First Samuel chapter 3. The sons of Eli were very wicked, evil men. They used the office of priest under Eli to their own benefit, to gratify their flesh. They take the fit, the hook into the thing there, pull it out first. It's like, give me what I want. You take it, then go their way. They would lie with the women and so on and so forth. Eli's sons were wicked. Hence, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, God the Father, rose up unto him Samuel. And interesting to note, the sons of Samuel also followed like suit as the sons of Eli. Isn't that interesting? But the Lord chose Samuel to replace Eli. Backstory, and you can read that on your own time. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those, those days. There was no open vision. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was and Samuel was laid down to sleep. Do we sometimes think that the light, the lamp of the Lord has gone out today within the church of the living God? Let's read that again. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep, that the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here am I. The Lord called Samuel, and Samuel said, Here am I. And he ran unto Eli and said, Here am I, for thou calledest me. And he said, I called not. Lie down again. And he went and lay down. 
And the Lord called yet again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I called not, my son, lie down again. Remember comparing spiritual things with spiritual? Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, <laughs> picture this, three times, and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. Samuel could have been, uh, okay, this is three times, what, what's the deal? And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. See, Eli figured it out. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be, if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. Have you ears to hear? Do you have an heart of understanding? Have you eyes to see? So Samuel went and lay down in his place, and the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. Now the Lord was trying to get his attention, Samuel's attention. Samuel was ignorant. Eli, who was not, but yet turned a blind eye and rather not mourned and chose his sons over the fear of the Lord. Listen and read with me now. I hope you have been. And the Lord said to Samuel, not holding anything back, behold, I will do a thing in Israel at which both the ears of everyone that heareth it shall tingle. In that day I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house. When I begin, when I begin, I will also make an end. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knoweth. Look at that verse again. Look at that. Don't look at me. Look at that verse. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knoweth. Because his sons made themselves vile and he restrained them not. And therefore I have sworn unto the house of Eli. Get a load of this that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged with sacrifice nor offering forever. This iniquity will not be purged from you till you die. And Samuel lay until the morning. One can only contemplates what was going through Samuel's head at that time. Talk about a revelation. And opened the doors of the house of the Lord, and Samuel feared to shew Eli the vision. Fear of man bringeth a snare, but whosoever putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Then Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And he answered, Here am I. And he said, What is the thing that the Lord has said unto thee? I pray thee, hide it not from me. 
Tell me everything. God do so to thee, and more also, if thou hide anything from me of all the things that he said unto thee. And Samuel told him every wit, and hid nothing from him. And he said, and look at this, look at this, look at this. And he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seemeth good. It is the Lord. Let him do what seemeth good. Eli's house, as we have just seen, was in big, big trouble. Big, big, big trouble. But see, what could have he, what could have Eli have done himself? For the iniquity that he knoweth. And look at this response. Well, it's the Lord. Yes, the Lord's will be done. Yes, you cannot do anything against the Lord. Especially if judgment is upon you. So, so then what? So then what? Isaiah chapter 22. Isaiah chapter 22. Isaiah chapter 22, verses 9 on to verse 14. Isaiah chapter 22, verses 9 on to verse 14. You think the fear of the Lord is a joke? You think it's something that you can put on and put off? Y'all, we, the church of the living God, truly need to be dreadfully afraid of the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Never mind what these sugar puff heretics are telling people. The fear of the Lord. We, as Church of the Living God, we all need ourselves a real heavy dose of the fear of the Lord right now. Isaiah chapter 22, verses 8, excuse me, 8 on to verse 14. And he discovered uh, Isaiah 22, verses 8 on to verse 14. And he discovered the covering of Judah. And thou didst look in that day to the armor of the house of the forest. God uncovered it, and they were looking to the armor of the forest. Hello? Ye have seen also the breaches of the city of David, that they are many. And ye gathered together the waters of the lower poor, pool. And ye have numbered the houses of Jerusalem, and the houses have ye broken down to fortify the wall. Ye made also a ditch between the two walls for the water of the old pool, but ye have not looked on to the maker thereof. Neither had respect unto him that fashioned it long ago. And in that day, did the Lord God of hosts call to weeping and to mourning and to baldness and to girding with sackcloth. And behold, and behold, joy and gladness, slaying oxen and killing sheep, eating flesh, drinking wine. Let us eat and drink for tomorrow. For tomorrow we shall die. <laughs> it's not funny. It's not funny.
And it was and it was revealed in mine ears by the Lord of hosts. Surely this iniquity shall not be purged from you till ye die. Sat the Lord of hosts. See, verses 12 under verse 13. For our instruction in righteousness, which this is. The saved people weeping. Girding of sackcloth. Not saying, oh, well, you know, what are we going to do? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we shall die. <gasps> Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and shew my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily. And delight to know my ways. As a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God, they ask, they ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Wherefore have we fasted? And they say, uh, Wherefore have we fasted? They say, And thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul? And thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast, ye find pleasure. And exact all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate. And to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day. To make your voice be heard on high. Now. Now notice what we just read. From verses 3 on to verse 4. Notice that. Okay. Now notice the contrast. From verses 5 on to verse 7. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to f afflict his soul? Is it, to, is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To lose the bands of wickedness. Put it away from you. To undo the heavy burdens. And to let the oppressed go free. And that ye break every yoke. Be not entangled again in a yoke of bondage. Have you taken the yoke of the Lord upon you? And what, what, you're going to take it off and take the yoke of the world back onto you? <sighs> no, man. Let's continue. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house, when thou seest the naked, that thou coverest him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. Then, here are the rewards of this, then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thy health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy re reward. He's going to watch your back. He's got your back. 
when you come to him on his terms. Not yours, his terms. And the Lord will watch your back. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. Here I am. If, if thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity, and if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul. Then shall thy light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as the noonday. And the Lord shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thy soul in drought, and make fat thy bones. And thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. And they shall be of thee, and they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. Like I remember, this video is for instruction in righteousness. Okay? And this, doctrinally, is for the Jews. Let's continue and finish this chapter. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, today, in this dispensation, keeping the Sabbath is not a requirement. Okay? Well, let's continue. If thou return away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shalt honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Second Samuel chapter 3, verses 19 on to verse 21. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him. And did let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan even to Beersheba knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh. For the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word. The Lord. Matthew, Matthew, chapter 7, Matthew, chapter 7, verses 21. And verse 27. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Remember, Sermon on the Mount is the constitution of the millennial kingdom. Doctrinally for us today, Sermon of the Mount, on the Mount, does not apply for us doctrinally, because this is for the millennial kingdom. Instruction and in righteousness, it's without. Okay? We have to remember that. Well, let's continue. 
And the kingdom of heaven, of course, is the kingdom of heaven in Jerusalem, where our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, when he come back, is going to rule and reign from with us, church of the living God, his body. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built a house upon a rock, and that rock is Christ. No other foundation can other man, any man lay than that which is laid, and that is Christ Jesus. I just paraphrased that, beg your pardon. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock, and that rock is Christ. It is not capital R here, but come on. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house. And it fell, and great was the fall of it, saying, Lord, Lord. Go back to Ecclesiastes chapter 12 now. The iniquity that Eli knew about, Solomon, come on, he had to have known that he was in trouble. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 8, 1 to verse 14. Again. Vanity of vanities, Seth the preacher, all is vanity. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught people knowledge. Eli still executed the office of priest and judge. Yea, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright, even words of truth. Even words of truth? While he was making idols for his foreign wives. The words of the wise are as goads. And as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd, and further by these, my son, be admonished of making many books, there is no end, and much study is a weariness of the flesh. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God, and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good, whether it be evil. Acts. Book of Acts, chapter 8. <clears throat> Verse 
you know about the Shimon the sorcerer guy? He believed and followed the apostles in Acts chapter 8. After in Acts chapter 7, the children of Israel, Israel as a nation, rejected the gospel officially. It was already the time of the Gentiles, but our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, had to offer unto them the kingdom of God. This, the spiritual kingdom, still had to go to the Jew first, or else he wouldn't have been righteous. And they rejected that in Acts chapter 7. The transition. Okay? And then Philip went down. And this Shimon the sorcerer guy, or this Shimon, he believed and he was baptized. Then he offered money that they would lay their hands on him so that he could receive the Holy Ghost and uh, do works to puff up himself and not the Lord to do his own works to glorify himself rather than being humble. Broken, contrite, and in the fear of the Lord, serving him. Acts chapter 8, verses 18 on to verse 24. And when Shimon saw that through the lying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent. Now going from unbelief to belief. Repent. Sorrow. Godly sorrow. Turning from your own self. Unto the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Repent. Therefore. Of this thy wickedness. And pray God. You pray God. You pray God. If perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. Fear the Lord. For I perceive that thou art in the ball gall of bitterness. And in the bond. Bond. Yoked. Of iniquity. Then answered Shimon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me. What can I do? It's going to happen. What can I do? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we'll die. <laughs> Pray ye to the Lord for me. That none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. The more I love you, the less I am loved. Do you not have eyes to see and ears to hear? Do you have an understanding heart? Do you?
stop, stop, just stop, just stop, get right with the Lord. Time, brethren, Church of the Living God, the time is so short. What if you were to die today? What is the Lord going to hold against you? You get up there, you're of the Church of the Living God, you get up there. This iniquity will not be purged from you till you till you die. The Lord look at you. I saved you. I sealed you. And this you did unto me. Just just get in there. Man's forth. We mustn't be silent on these matters. And those of you who are of the church of the living God, never mind these wicked devils. Forget them. They've made their choice. Look at, look at me. Look at me. You who are of the church of the living God, truly saved, truly born again and converted, you know what you must do. You know what you must do. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Please. Please do. What is right? According to the scriptures, Church of the Living God. Church of the Living God. Please do what you know, if you are saved, what you want to do. Who else is going to tell you this? The heretic devils who are going to itch your ear? No, we're not judging you. Oh, we're all sinners. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Anyway, that is going to be it for this video. Very impromptu. Very impromptu. We love you. We are praying for you. So many of you. May our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, be glorified and magnified. And we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.